Okay, so recently I've been really interested in parallel computing on graphics cards. So since I have an AMD GPU, I decided to write an OpenCL program that can run on my CPU and on my graphics card to test the performance of both and see what all the fuss was about for myself. So I wrote a program that performs in Gaussian blur on PNG images, mostly because it seemed pretty cool, and also because this type of problem has great data parallelism, which is what graphics cards are best at doing. So first I'll show you the program working and the performance benchmarks, and then I'll show you some of the interesting parts of the code. I'll leave a link to my GitHub in the description where you can find all the source code if you want to try to compile it and run it yourselves on your own machines. The program is written for OpenCL 1.2, so in theory it should work on NVIDIA GPUs with only minor modifications, although I haven't tested that. Uh, so let's first look at the image that we're going to be uh, doing everything on. Uh, so this is the image that we're going to be blurring. You can see it's like really nice and colorful and really sharp. Um, so let's first compile and then and we'll run it. So the way this program works is you give it the input image uh, and then the standard deviation. I'll talk about the standard deviation more in a second, but basically the larger this number, the stronger the blur and the, um, the longer it will take. So then device is either C for CPU or G for GPU, and then threads is optional, but we'll put one thread. Um, okay, let's run it and see what happens. Uh, so you can see that it started blurring, um, and this is the, the kernel that it's gonna be using to blur everything. So this is actually, kind of looks like a matrix, but it's a one dimensional uh, vector. So we're, I've, I've separated the Gaussian kernel into, into two passes. Um, to make it a bit more, um, to give it a bit more performance. Um, but you can see that it's blurring and then now it's finished. It took 22.5 seconds uh, on my CPU. My CPU is a Ryzen 5 3600 uh, CPU. And this was the image. It's 4900 by 3200 pixels. Um, bit depth 8 means that every channel of every pixel is 8 bits. And color type 6 means that every pixel has an RGBA component. Um, Okay, so let's look at the output image and see what it looks like. Um, let's change that to... Let's see if, oh, whoops. I need to actually give it the program to open it. Okay, and there we go. And you can see that the output image um, is a lot more blurred than the input image was. And it, it still has the same exact dimensions, um, but you can see that it's it's a lot blurrier than it was before. This was the, the input image, is this. Right, and you can see how much sharper that is. Um, okay, so on my CPU, it took 22.5 seconds to perform the blur. And let's try that again, but on the same exact exact same setup, but now we'll use 12 threads. So this is the, my CPU has six cores, 12 threads. So this is the best performance you can get out of the CPU. Um, okay, let's run that. You can see it does the same thing. It starts up again. And this time it took 3.8 seconds. So a really big improvement over 22 seconds. And if we look at the output image, you can see that it's exactly the same. So it, it overwrote the other one with, with the new blur, but it, you can see that it, it does the exact same thing, but faster. Okay, now let's run it on the GPU. So my GPU is a Radeon RX 5700 XT. Um, let's see how, how fast that takes and how it works. Boom, so less than half a second. Uh, and then the reason it takes like a while to, to output it is because I'm only timing the duration of the actual blur um, and not like the, the writing in the PNG and the, the writing out the PNG, um, just the blur. So again, if we... Uh, and again, you can see that it, it's exactly the same blur. So it runs a lot faster, but it performs the same exact blur. Um, we can test this on larger standard deviations. Basically, how, how this works is that this here is the one-dimensional kernel, convolution kernel, or, or you can call it a filter. Um, and for, for the Gaussian blur that we're doing, this should be like two-dimensional. Um, and then you put the center of the kernel on top of the target pixel. Uh, and then you sort of multiply each value in the kernel 
um, by the pixel that it lands on top of, and then you just add them all up. And this is already, uh, you can see it's already normalized. Um, and basically the, the way that I get this kernel is from the Gaussian function, and that's based on the standard deviation that you input, um, but the length of it changes. So I've set it up so that the length of this kernel is going to be um, six times the standard deviation plus one. Um, which seemed to be a pretty reasonable um, uh, way to do it. But you can see since this isn't two-dimensional, it's one-dimensional, we have to do two passes. Um, you know, one where we, we treat this as like a, a row vector and one where we treat it as a column vector. And then that'll get you the same exact results as a, as a regular blur, but for every single pixel that we're blurring, we only need to look at um, 2n other pixels rather than n squared other pixels um, because yeah, you can see you can look up how the Gaussian blur looks on your own time. Okay, um, did we run it on the? Yeah, okay, we ran it on the GPU again. So let's try it back on the CPU, but this time we'll give it a standard deviation of 40. Um, so you can see that right now the length was 121 of the kernel. Um, so when we run it on 40, the length becomes 241. Um, so it's you know there's a lot more computation that needs to happen per pixel now, so it should take longer. Um, yeah, let's see how long it takes. I'm probably gonna okay 43 seconds um, so if we look at the output image you can see it's actually a lot more blurred than, than it was before um, let's try the same thing on the CPU again but now with uh, with 12 threads instead of one uh, I didn't put a thread value up here on the previous one but that's if you don't give it a thread value that just treats it as one so now let's do the same exact thing, but with 12 threads. Um, and it took seven seconds. So it's definitely a lot, you know, a lot faster than one thread, but it is kind of going up from, from the standard deviation of 20. And again, you can see it gives us the same output. Okay, now let's try it, same thing, but on the GPU. And you see that it basically didn't increase the time it took, maybe by like one hundredth of a second. Um, but still, it, it gives us the same. Um, it gives us the same output as before, right? It's still really blurred. Okay, so let's let's really ramp it up now. Let's try it on a standard deviation of one hundred um, on the CPU. I'm not going to do one thread because that'll take too long. But let's see how long twelve threads will take. Um, hopefully, it's not too long. I don't think. Um, okay. Yeah, so now you can see that the you know, that the vector is is really long. So for every single pixel, we're we're look we're looking at you know this many. How many is that? Six hundred and one other pixels to compute its its output value, and we're doing that twice uh, for every pixel in the image. So it really does take quite a while. Um, but although we are increasing the computations, uh, okay, so that's took eighteen seconds, and I'll I'll have some graphs after to to sort of put this all into perspective um, yeah and now you can see that it's really blurred so it, it's kind of you know you can't even tell that this used to be flowers probably um, okay now let's try it on the GPU and this is this is kind of the part that was most interesting to me because you can see this went up you know by a lot I think we started at like three seconds so it went from three seconds to 18 seconds the GPU started at you know 0.4 seconds 0.4 something but if we do it on the same input, it's it basically doesn't go up. Um, so it yeah, I mean, it's pretty crazy. And if we if we look, if we look at the output, um, you know, it's the same. It's the same exact output, but it, it basically doesn't increase the number of time the uh, the time it took to do it. Um, so that's that's pretty crazy. This was you know, um, I think it's really interesting at least. Um, 
Okay, so let's look at, I have a few graphs just to put all this into perspective. Um, one second. So here we have, so the first thing I tested is the, um, just the performance on the CPU, depending on how many threads you, you used. Um, so you can see here, I just, I did it from, you know, I did the blur on one thread all the way up to 40 threads uh, with a standard deviation of 20 and a standard deviation of 40. Um, and up here we have the blur duration, so how many seconds it took, and, and this is obviously the number of threads. So you can see on one thread it's always the slowest. Um, it takes, you know, this one takes, I don't know, 42 seconds, and this one takes 22 seconds. I hope you can see that, it's kind of small. Um, and then you can see as we increase the number of threads, the, perf the, the time it takes to do it goes down. Um, what's really interesting, and I don't know if I can try to... No, that doesn't work. Um, but it's actually the fastest on 12 threads. Um, so it, it, the, you know, the, the time it takes to do it decreases all the way until 12 threads. Um, and then it basically just stabilizes at the same speed. But it is always faster on 12 threads than anything else. 6.9 is, is the fastest it'll do. This is 7.2. This is 7.2 as well. This is 6.9. Um, but I read, you know, in a few different places that it's actually better to, you know, go above um, the number of threads that that you have. So my, my CPU can do 12 threads, you know, on hardware. Um, but I read in some places that it's better to do it, you know, go up to like maybe 18 or 20 threads. Um, just sort of so when the operating so when the operating system is context switching between threads, it's you know, it's more likely to keep choosing your own, but, you know, as you can see, this was in my experience on 20 and on 40, um, the fastest time was always 12 threaded. So, okay, that's interesting, but this doesn't have anything to do with the GPU. Now let's look at the GPU, and this is where it, where it gets really crazy. Um, so here we have the yellow bar is how long it took for one threaded Ryzen 5 3600 to perform the blur, um, and this is on a standard deviation of 500, 100, 40, and 20. Um, and you can see that it's a lot longer, but there's actually a third one is that there is so the red one is 12 threads and then the blue one is the graphics card and you see you literally can't see it on the screen, although it, you know it's there. Um, so you know even 12 threads is a lot faster than one thread, but you know both of them are like basically infinity compared to, to the uh, to the GPU. So then what I did is I got rid of the single threaded and kept the <laughs> and just kept the 12 threaded and the GPU, um, and you can see that it's still, you know, basically infinity. It's it's m kind of close here, um, you know, kind of similar here. But you know, as as the as the number of computations increases, it you know it it just you know the diff the ratio between them just goes up to infinity as well. Um, now I have to be honest that yeah, um, I'm giving the graphics card every single chance to succeed because the operations are floating point operations and which is what the graphics card is, is designed to do, and the CPU isn't that great at floating point, you know, arithmetic, but um, also as we're increasing the number of computations by increasing the standard deviation, we're not actually increasing the number of memory um, transferred from the, you know, from the host device, which is the CPU, to the graphics card. And, and the memory transfer is by far the slowest, um, the slowest thing that the graphics card does. The computations are fast, but it's the memory transfer that kills it, but we're not actually increasing the memory transfer. We're still dealing with the same image, and you know the Gaussian kernel gets a little bit longer, but that's like tiny. How many? Like what? A hundred bytes more? Um, okay. So yeah, but still. So even though we're giving the graphics card, you know, every chance to succeed, if you do have some sort of you know problem that you know requires floating points, floating point arithmetic, you know, it's just and it's like highly data parallel, like like this is, then you can see that it. it you really can't not use the the GPU for this. It's just it's just crazy how much performance um, you get. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about the the code. Um, so basically, how how it works is that if we this is where the kernel is you know created the Gaussian kernel, and basically what we're just doing is. Um, we're, we're looking at the Gaussian function at, at zero and at, you know, at x equals zero, at x equals one, at x equals two, so on and so forth, until we get the full length of the kernel, right? So if our kernel is like, I don't know, five um, pixels long, you know, then the third pixel in the kernel would correspond to x equals zero, 
of the Gaussian kernel, and then the other two would be x equals 1 and x equals minus 1. I don't know, that's kind of hard to explain, but it it's a pretty standard um, like way of, of getting the Gaussian kernel. Um, so on the GPU, we're using um, OpenCL, and yeah, I don't know. You can you can see all this source code yourself. I don't know if this is really interesting. There's a there's a weird memory leak that I'm getting, which I think is actually a, a mistake on like the part of OpenCL, but uh, I'm not sure. So I I'm probably gonna submit a bug request and see what what's up with that. But you can see I have I go into more detail about that on my uh, on the GitHub. Um, and then the way this the CPU works is it basically divides up the image into the number into like horizontal bands based on the number of um, threads that you specify and uh, and then it just each thread just works on that horizontal band you know for the first pass and the second pass and then on the GPU side um, on the GPU side I tried to do a few optimizations um, but they all made things slower so this is the kernel this is the actual code that's executing on the graphics card um, and so one thing that I tried to do is I tried to separate all the work items into um, like work groups manually um, and then I would read in this value from from global memory or constant memory into local memory and that should have been faster um, but that that actually made things slower so I decided to just get rid of all the optimizations and let OpenCL you know decide how to ha decide how to partition everything itself uh, and that made things better there's a lot of other things that I want to test um, I want to test you know what happens if uh, you know instead of doing floating point arithmetic we're doing integer arithmetic how does that like does that slow things down on the graphics card or what does it do um, also there's you can instead of reading and writing data um, from the graphics card like using CL on Q read and write you can do that you can get the same if, like effect with mapping memory to host to host memory um, and that's supposed to increase performance as well so I want to test how much that uh, increases performance and there's a lot of other things that I want to I want to see I basically started this project being curious about um, you know the graphics card versus the CPU on on some things but now I'm really curious about how to optimize um, the the graphics card um, work so anyway I think that's pretty much it um, if you have any questions you can ask them below and, and all the links will be in the description I'll, I'll leave a link to the to the data as well in the description and you can you know have a look at that on your own terms if you're interested oh wait one more thing I wanted to talk about was the make file because that's probably something you're gonna need to change if you're trying to get this run in your own system um, so basically I'm using rockm's OpenCL implementation on Ubuntu 20.04 um, so if you're doing something so for this specific um, setup Basically, when you install rockm, that goes into your slash op folder, and then when you're uh, when you're compiling, the the host um, program, which in my case is blurgpu.c, you're going to need to you know include um, this file path slash op slash rockm slash opencl slash include, and then you're going to need to do the same thing when you're actually linking the object files um, with you know the same file path except instead of slash include you put slash lib. And then you also need to do slash l open cl. Um, that's for this specific system. But if you're if you're doing a different, um, you know, open if you're using a different open cl implementation, maybe by Nvidia or Intel or something. And if you're not on like a Linux slash Ubuntu based operating system, you're probably going to need to change these um, file paths to tell the compiler and linker where to look for the headers and object files. Okay, that's it. So thanks a lot for watching.